YouTube, welcome back to the channel, DJ Q, right back at you again with another video, man, you know, if you guys have been liking the videos, liking the content I've been posting, please let me know in the comments, also put some suggestions down there, some stuff you guys want to see, it's fitness related, food related, DJ related, turntablism related, you know, let me know what's up, man, let me know what y'all want to see, and hopefully, you know, I can help you out with some knowledge that I know, or just give you some entertainment, um, Give you something to watch when you're bored, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for. That's what I do it for. But getting into today's video is kind of a tutorial about how to build your own custom scratch records for Serato and Tractor for digital DJing. Um, had a conversation with a homie of mine. Shout out to the homie Aflex. Um, a week or so ago about, you know, he wanted to build his own scratch record um, because we get our scratch records, we download them online, they have all the sounds and the samples that we want to use, but they're kind of all over the place over, you know, three minutes, maybe two minutes, and we may have to go through in Serato or Tractor and set hot cues to each sample that we want to use. Well, I know a way where, where we can make your own custom scratch records. You can take those samples, put them in line where we want them and have them boom, 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 right in the line. We only need to use one hot cue uh, to get to that first one and then after that, everything lines up right on the record, right where you want it to be and you just kind of look at it like a clock um, and you'll be able to kind of go through your samples and do your cuts real smooth, real easy. You don't have to worry about you know hitting that hot cue. Remember, oh, is it hot cue five for the fresh, hot cue two for the all oh, yeah. You'll know where it is because you put it together. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Ableton Live. I'm sure you can do it in other uh, DAWs that are out there, but I personally know Ableton Live. So I'm gonna put it to put together just a short one, a real quick one, show you guys how it's done. So stay tuned, man, keep cutting, be dope. All right guys, I got Ableton open. Um, I've already picked out my samples that I wanna use. So the next step that I want to do is go into my BPM and change it to 133.3333. Notice on turntable, you know, when you're cutting and you're playing a record, it's at 33 and a third. So 133.333 kind of makes sense, right? All right, so now that, I, like I said, I got my samples that I want to use um, already picked out just to save some time. I'm gonna go in and change my grid to a half bar grid because I wanna be able to put my samples um, every half bar so I can split them up on the record. As you can see, I put my first one at bar one, the second one is at is gonna be at the half bar once I move it over there. Gotta trim that down just a little bit, there we go. Move that over and I'm gonna move my second sample right behind it on that half grid. I want to use that second sample I have up there for my second sample, so I'm going to go in and pick this other one. Move it over. Actually, that was my first one that I wanted to move out of the way. There we go. Alright, so I got my first sample set. I'm trim that up. Get that all straight. There we go. And then I'm going to move my second sample in. We'll find it. Which one did I want to use that one? There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to move this one into the second half bar. Half bar grid, there we go, so it snaps into place, trim it up, boom. So first and second sample is at the first bar and then at the half of the, the bar is going to be my second sample. And then on the second bar, we're just gonna follow suit and do the same thing. All right. So I'm just gonna place all those together one by one. 
again, the trick is to make Ableton's BPM uh, 133.33. Um, also, what you want to do is turn your warping off. You do not want your warping on your audio sample because then it's going to screw it all up. Turn your warping off. Turn it at 133.33. I'm going to emphasize that because that is important. If you put your samples on each bar, like bar one, bar two, bar three, um, the wherever your first high cue that you set, whether you start from 12 o'clock on the record or like me, I start at the needle, every sample is gonna hit when you get to that that spot. So when I spin the record around to the needle, every sample is gonna hit. If you do it a half of a bar, um, your samples are gonna hit at your first spot and then halfway. Um, you could even break it down even more than that if you wanted to, if you wanted samples to be a quarter of the way, a half, three quarters of the way, and then full. So you would just break it down even more. You could pick like a fourth, a fourth bar grid and then put your samples at every fourth bar. All right. Again, I got everything lined up. I'll go ahead and throw it in Serato. You know, save. Uh, I'm sorry, export it first as a wave MP3, whatever you want to do. Then import it into Serato, and then you have your file. All right, y'all. I'm gonna put this one high cue on, and let's test it out. So that's what's up y'all man. I hope that helps uh, all my scratchers out there to put together their own scratch records. You know, and now you can customize it and not have to worry about using like 50 million hot cues to figure out where your where your samples are. You can go in and kind of pre-program your own set of scratch sounds you want to use and man and go to town. Yo, my name is DJ Q, man. Keep cutting. Be dope. Man, like the video. Comment down below. Give me some suggestions. Tell me what's up, man. Let me know, you know, what you guys want to see. Um, I'm going to try to keep it cracking. I'm out of here. Peace.